This video looks at the Remote Connect Object Browser. An object browser is where you view live data from your RTU. There is a default object browser, and you can also create custom object browsers where you get to choose what data to look at. This feature is similar to the Point Browser in the eConfigurator, or the Register Editor in Telepace, or a Spy List in Workbench. We begin by creating a new project. Let's select the default USB connection. Now let's select online and write the application to the RTU. The object browsers are found under the online diagnostics. There's three tabs here. The first tab is online information that we can refresh about the RTU, and we can see the date and time of the last refresh. Under the logic tab, we can refresh and receive diagnostic information about the logic application. The last tab is where the object browsers are. There's an object browser dedicated to just the forced objects, and we'll look at that a little bit later. And then there's a list of custom object browsers and a default object browser just for the RTU's local I.O. channels. We can refresh this with one press of the refresh button, or we can auto refresh every five seconds, or we can select down to one second. I have an I.O. simulator connected to my RTU, so if I change some of the digital inputs, I can view the data changes here. Moving down to the digital outputs, there's a box that's enabled here for applying a value, so I can actually write to some of the objects here. But note that if I try and write to it, it resets it to zero. This is because I'm still in read mode. Let's click out of the refresh, the continuous refresh, so that I can write a value to my first digital output. And I write to the selected value. There, it just clicked. And I can write to the second one as well. Moving further down the list, we have analog inputs. If I auto refresh every one second again and change my analog inputs, I can see the values change here. You can also change the format of the displayed value. This is the scaled engineering value. We can also look at it in binary form or in hexadecimal. Let's go back to the real format. Now, there's another parameter here that we're observing, and it's the quality. And we see something other than online. And this is where there's a great deal of information that's also available about our objects. In addition to being online, this analog input has gone below its under range limit. This one here is not responding, and that's because I don't have an analog output module on this RTU. Let's make a change to the analog input number one and show some more quality flags. I'm going to change the configuration of that object. And under alert notifications, I'm going to turn on a high limit and set it to 80 and a low limit and set that to 20.
and I'll write that to my RTU. Now back to my browser here, I'm going to select the scaled value. And if I change my analog input below 20, I see that the L1 state quality flag has come on. If I go further below, I see that the under range as well has come on. If I take it above 20, The L1 state should go off. And then if I go above 80, the next limit comes on. So we see more than just the current value. We see the quality flags. Now, as you add more objects to your application, you're going to need an object browser to look at its data online. So to create a custom object browser, such as a browser for each oil or gas well in a multi-well application, or a browser for each pump in a multi-pump lift station. Let's look at an example of how we would do that. Let's look at a lift station application. If I had a two-pump lift station, Let's rename our digital input number one as pump one status. And I'm going to create an object grouping called pump one. And then the digital output that controls this pump one, I'll rename it pump one motor. And I'll also put it in the object grouping now, pump one. Now if I added some more objects, perhaps runtime, I'll also put it in that object grouping. And motor starts. So that's pump one. Apply. Now if there's a second pump, first of all, the digital input, that will be pump two. And I'll make that a new object grouping called pump two. second digital output becomes pump two motor and now I can select the object grouping of pump two. Okay, so I'll write this to my controller first. And I'll create a object browser to view it. So it's not listed here yet, it's configured in the same location as the default browser. So I select Add Browser, 
I'll call the first one pump one. And I can either uh, double click here or select this arrow and it'll jump to that location where I can then add the first entry in this uh, object browser. So I could select individually all the way down here, pump one, something like that. Or I can simply select add all objects in a current group. And then I select my group pump one. And this will add all the objects in that object grouping. There they are, the four. And then I can create another object browser. This one will be for pump two. And now when I'm online, I can view the default or pump one or pump two.